One of our most popular YouTube videos was our intermediate climbing techniques where me and Jen run through a bunch of techniques which are essential for those intermediate climbing grades. So we're back again today at the Depot Sheffield to film part two of our intermediate climbing techniques. Today we're going to be covering flagging, toe hooking and the tactics required for flashing hard boulders. Flagging is going to be one of the most common techniques used by climbers to find balance on the wall by changing their body position. The reason we need to find balance on the wall is to make the moves often more controlled and this can make the moves much less strenuous on the body. The principle of flagging is essentially moving your leg or your foot out to the side of your body. This is going to shift some of your weight or your center of mass over to one side, making it easier to make the move either in that direction or away from that direction. Jen is going to show us the three common types of flagging that we're going to use while on the wall. So this first one is going to be called an outside flag. So the leg is coming away from the body. Again, we've just got one foot on the wall and this is helping find balance. So Jen can take her hand off the wall to make a move. This is what we call an inside flag. So her leg is coming on the inside of her body and pressing into the wall. This is helping her balance, seeing she can rest off the wall just on one hand. She's going to flick this into a back flag. So this is very similar position and this is what we call a back flag because the leg is going behind her. Now that we've shown you the three main types of flagging, we're going to put them into practice and show you how you can use them on the wall. This is a bold problem with an example of where flagging is really useful and at least for my ability it's almost essential that I flag underneath to come into this match. And that's because I need as much weight over here in this direction and on this foothold as possible because the handhold is kind of not great facing in the wrong direction. And if I leave my body weight over here, what happens is I come into match and I have nothing pulling me back anymore and suddenly I start swinging this way and this is kind of what we call a barn door where you're unbalanced and your hinges are all wrong and you're just going to swing away from the wall. And if I don't get my weight in this direction, I'm just going to peel off of this handhold. Okay, and this is I'm going to try and flag my leg, which isn't on the foothold. So my right leg as far under as possible to get my weight over there before I've even come in for the match. So this is a perfect example of a back flag. I'm taking my back leg and dropping it behind. And I'm also, what I actually ended up doing when I flick into this one, I ended up putting the flag in again because I wanted my weight over here so that I wasn't swinging into this as aggressively, get my weight there first and then come in much slower. So on the purple climb, that style of flagging was very much just about finding balance using body position. So when I was making the move, my center of gravity was moving over. However, on this red climb, we're gonna use a different style of flagging, which is much more about using body tension and pushing into the wall with your flagging leg to make the movement. One observation you can make when looking at a climb is if there are a lot of footholds or not many footholds. With this red one, straight away I can see there's probably only one foothold to start and then not that many through the rest of the climb. And this already makes us start to think that there's probably going to be a lot of flagging movements on this climb because you don't have many footholds available. This style of flagging where you have to place your foot against the wall requires core tension. You're actually actively pushing on that foot. So core strength exercises are also gonna help your ability to perform these tension-based flagging moves. So we're in a gym today, which is actually really good at setting footholds exactly where you need them. And this is nice for root setting and it helps direct your technique. 
However, in this case, we want to learn how to flag where footholds aren't always available. So one drill we're going to use right now is a drill where you're only allowed to place one foot on a foothold at any one time. You're not allowed two footholds to make a move. So you see Jen's just placing that one foot on the wall. She's of course got more footholds available. And then as she goes through, try to alternate between which foots you're moving off. So you're not just going left, right. Try and use the same foot. Yeah, so going for an inside flag there, back flag on that one. And it's gonna keep it quite varied and interesting moving between different footholds each time. The nice thing about this drill is you're gonna perform it on all sorts of different boulder problems. So the same flagging position is never gonna occur twice, giving you that really big variety of movement, which is essential for mastering the skill. In part one of our intermediate climbing techniques, we covered heel hooks, and now we're covering the other side of the shoe. We're talking about toe hooks. Toe hooks are essentially gonna do the same thing that a heel hook will for you, but they can be much more useful in several situations. The first is it's gonna give you a bit more reach in gaining that hold. They can also be really helpful for body positioning. When placing a toe hook, you can often sink your hips slightly further away from the foothold, which can give you more balance in the same way that flagging can. You may also find in certain situations where you're unable to get a heel hook because of the orientation of a hold, that a toe hook works better instead. And finally, sometimes releasing a heel can result in a big swing because it keeps you really locked in whereas releasing a toe hook can be much easier and result in less of a swing. This purple boulder problem starts with a really obvious toe hook position, and this is the hold we're gonna toe hook on. This brings us to our first point, which is really important when we're talking about the technique of toe hooking, and that is the placement or orientation of the foot on the foothold. So here we're looking at if we're gonna place it toe into the wall, or heel down. Essentially what we're trying to do is get as much of our foot behind that foothold as possible. So looking at this orientation, this big fin, I'm gonna keep heel down, and this is gonna give me the best purchase on that foothold. The next thing we're looking at is hip positioning, and Jen is gonna demonstrate how we position our hips when using a toe hook. So the most important thing we're looking at here is Jen is gonna straighten her leg, and this is gonna sink the hips away from the toe hook. This is gonna weight it more, using less strength to hold that position. So Jen's gonna also demonstrate using a bent leg. And what you'll find is this is a more strenuous position. It probably falls out anyways, meaning it makes the move a lot snatchier, having to grab that in that decelerating position. This boulder is a perfect example of where a toe hook is gonna work much better than a heel. For Jen, she couldn't get the heel hook on because it was too far away, and also the orientation would be awkward to get that kind of rotation. This yellow boulder is a great example of needing to use a toe hook to make the first move. So if we run through the steps needed to perform this toe hook move, first we're talking about the orientation of the foot to get that perch on the foothold. So if we look at the shape of it, it's clearly gonna work best in this position here with the heel pointing down and not rotated out to the side. The next thing we're gonna look at, which Jen is gonna demonstrate, is she's gonna shift her hips away from the toe hook, bringing the hips out, straightening the leg. By straightening that leg, she's gonna bring her hips over underneath the hold she's going to, finding that balance point before actually releasing the hand. In the last part, me and Jen covered projecting, but today we are going to cover flashing. Now, this is less of a technique and it is more of a tactic. So me and Jen are gonna go through the best tactics we use when we're trying to approach a boulder and climb it first go. So we're gonna start on this red one on the comp wall because they tend to be really committing and designed to be hard to flash. Right, we're gonna start with a good root read and find all the holds. Yeah, that's quite easy on this one. Yeah. They're quite big, yeah. Spotted them. Apart from this one, it's the only small one on it. Yeah. And yeah. then you come up with a, a sequence that you think will work. I reckon it's a big, big jump to this first hold. Yeah. Which has like a dip at the back. So if you like get further away, you can often see the profile of the hold a bit better. Yeah. And then what do you think? Left hand up or right hand? I think foot down there. Yeah. Go this match. Yeah. Then you I think the twist will be quite hard match. Then foot yeah. on this thing. Then maybe left into the shoulder. Left and shoulder, foot Hard up, foot. match and go. Yeah. So you can see me and Josh are sort of mimicking the moves with our hands. And this is just a form of visualization, really. Um, kind of practicing the moves off the wall. So we have a basic sequence in mind. 
but it's also really important to remember that you might need to adapt when you're on the wall. So we've got a plan A, but if we need to tweak anything, then we can, we can do that. Flashing, if you can, brush the holds. Yeah. If it means a lot to you, make sure you've got everything in your favour and friction is a big one of those. Yeah, and then the, the last point is to just fully commit, like believe you can flash it. Don't have one of those test goes where you just half try. Yay! <laughs> but also another tip is if you're climbing with someone that has different strengths or weaknesses to you or different heights, different arm span, then like don't get sucked into copying exactly what they just did and think about where it might differ for you if it's a reach or it's a body positioning thing. Come on. Nice. Oh no! <laughs> Slippy. Oh, I just lost the friction on it. Next we're going to try this green one and this is a pretty typical competition block where all of the holds are really big and we're going to have to just figure out the body positions rather than the sequence of hand moves. Come on. Nice gosh, guys. Come on. Yeah, go on. Oh, that was pretty close. Oh. <laughs> that feel like the right oh, body position? I felt like they're living in that. Yeah. So the other thing we can look for is bits of rubber or like chalk prints to show us where we might hold the holds. When they're this big, it's really good to know like bits that might be more, more useful. Change of plan. Go on, Jen. Come on. Come on. Oh, oh. that's the way. If you'd hit that, yeah, you'd have had that. Just sunk out the shoulder a bit. Oh, dear. Good effort. That's the way then, isn't it? Yeah, so I got into a similar position to Josh and it felt totally weird to me. I couldn't really get any more height, so I just changed my plan. Like, I saw a little bit of rubber on this hold on the left, so I thought I'd, I'd try that and explore where that got me. And, yeah, eventually it started to feel pretty doable like that. I think that's the method, that one. Yeah. Mm. So next one we're going to do this purple, because... I love a slab. No, I hate slabs. <laughs> but Jen said we have to climb this one. <laughs> and they're always really hard to flash. I get a little bit spookier. I think it's I think it's right foot on. Yeah. Up left. through. Bring left through to this, right foot there. Yeah. Up to that. Up to that. And then where are you gonna put your left foot for the end? Just oh it looks like people have wedged it in. Yeah, yeah maybe it's in this slot here. Yeah. Go on. Go on, go on. Nice. Oh. That's a little uh, foot, foot jamming technique. Yeah. There. Yeah, I might not do that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. 
<laughs> Serves Jen right for making me try a slab. Yeah. <laughs> this quite bunched up for me. I might go to this first. Yeah, I wonder if that's how it's been set. And then that. Come on. Go on, Josh, go on. Yeah, nice. Let's try quite hard then. Whoa. Big that. Yeah. As you can see from our flashing session, we didn't do all of the boulders and that's totally normal. If you end up finishing your flashing session and you've done every single boulder, try to think about adding in some harder boulders into that session to push yourself more because that's where you're really gonna learn the lessons and tactics required for flashing hard boulders. So that was our intermediate session two. So if you enjoyed that, make sure you check out session one where we covered some different tactics and don't forget to like and subscribe.